Hello, my name is Pauline Baca and I'm a member of the St. John Fisher College Visual Rhetoric course. I'm very excited to share my project with you today as I have been a Rochester native for over 21 years. I love many places in this great city, but today we'll share with you one of my favorites. The Village Gate is one of the most unique and artistic places in Rochester. It combines shops, restaurants, and businesses in order to provide a place for a variety of individuals who experience this Rochester hotspot. Possibly my favorite part of the Village Gate is telling others about it, as not many have heard of this wonderful venue. The Village Gate is located on North Goodman, right next to Anderson Avenue. It's comprised of the 302 and 274 locations which create a square that is called the Village Gate. As we scroll down the image, we can see the square. The 302 location is made of the green awnings, while the 274 location is depicted with the colorful umbrellas. These two locations create a square which holds the sense of community at the Village Gate. Possibly one of the most interesting things about the Village Gate is the entrances. They are never simple. As we can see here, this entrance is an urban mural. We can also see the modern door. The next entrance is the iconic gate, which is referred to in the name Village Gate. It's a wrought iron gate that has whimsical elements. More importantly, this gate is the entrance to the square the entrance to the community. Just as the wrought iron gate represents the gate and village gate, the village also represents something important. The village represents the community, which can be found in the square. Many times, especially in the summer, we see entertainment in the square, ranging from musicians to magicians, even comedians, enter the square and give the guests of the village gate some form of entertainment. Onlookers pile up in the square to see what's going on. One can compare the Village Gate to Boston's Quincy Market or even New York City's Union Square. There are many benches and seating dispersed around the Village Gate. Often they are just there to relax and enjoy the surroundings. Again, give that sense of the feeling of community. There are also seats that are reserved for specific groups. Here we see a table reserved for card players who attend the comic and card store in the Village Gate. These types of seating arrangements support individual community. There is also restaurant seating in the Village Gate. Restaurant seating contains the typical community we always see at a restaurant. However, in the Village Gate, it's a little different. As we can see with this picture of Salinas, those who are sitting on the patio of the restaurant can not only connect with those at their table and with their waitress or waiter, but they can also connect with the outside square of the Village Gate. They are not secluded like a typical restaurant. We can also see this inside of the Village Gate. The picture here shows one of the most popular restaurants, California Rowan. There is seating outside the restaurant, but it's within Village Gate. Those sitting in these seats can again, like those at Salinas, connect with their table, waiter or waitress, and whatever is happening outside of the restaurant. Seating is also available to view art, and there is so much art at the Village Gate. As we've already seen with the entrances, the building itself is practically artwork. There is art both inside and outside. There are paintings, statues, and even functional pieces like the benches we saw earlier. This face is one of the iconic art pieces at the Village Gate and one of my favorites. It sits outside in the Village Gate Square. Community is also built with performances. Like we already saw with the outside performances in the summer, the Village Idiots is another form of performance that is available at the Village Gate. All the entertainment at the Village Gate builds a sense of community. Whether it be at the restaurant, with the Village Idiots, the outside entertainment, or the artwork, community is constantly being built. But unfortunately, 
the village gate does not always have a sense of community. As many of us have seen, seasons often change community. Rochester weather is no exception to this. In the winter, it can get very cold and snowy. No one wants to go outside in this type of weather. These next few photos were taken a few weeks ago. As we can see, the village gate is cold and empty. There are no performers outside, because no one wants to be outside. With no one outside, and virtually no one at the village gate, there is less community in this area. But I have to say, this problem is larger than the village gate. It can be seen all around Rochester. There are many festivals in the summer, like the Lilac Festival, Corn Hill Festival, and the Park Avenue Festival. But what happens in the winter? Nothing. Some suggestions can be taken from looking at other cities around us. In Syracuse, there is an annual tree lighting. In Buffalo, there is a winter festival with ice sculptures and even mazes made of snow. And in Albany, there's first night where families can go outside, go to restaurants, stores, and enjoy the winter weather. I look at Village Gate as a place where this can start. As an art-based community, it can be the forerunner in creating winter events for the Rochester community. This would not only be a good addition for the Village Gate, but for Rochester as a whole.